the food he's talking about isn't necessarily what I meant. I just meant oh. food in general. Well, we could start food. with that food, though. I had good food tonight, so we should talk. And I cooked good food the night before. I, okay. All right. We'll start with my adventure with Soylent. I'll tell you what. It, uh, <laughs> are you really sure you want to start with this? <laughs> start you with might know. So I, I've decided to um, try to take the pressure off my lunches because I'm always super busy during lunch. I'm always really kind of like uh, ordering like at the last minute a sandwich or something, something that's expensive and not good for me and et cetera, et cetera. And I, I felt actually been feeling really bad about this. So I decided to sign up for Soylent, which is a meal replacement essentially in a bottle. This is Soylent 2.0. And it is, I should have pulled up, I didn't know we were going to talk about it right now. I, I, it is, uh, Rika, how would you explain it? Like it is... Um, um, it's essentially healthy parts of an entire meal turned into something similar to a protein shake, except it's very, it's, it's a lot thicker for one. Yeah, they describe it as a ready-to-drink meal in a bottle. Yeah. And uh, it's, if you, you the way it gets kind of, if you're actually going to get involved... The way it gets sort of doable is it's it's a subscription, so the price is a little more manageable. Each bottle of Soylent 2O is designed to include one fifth of all the essential micronutrients you need a day, supposedly. Mm-hmm. I'm not big on it for the nutrition, although I'm I am curious to see what the effects of that are. But what I'm what I'm trying to do is uh, I'm trying to address several issues. I'm trying to address time crunch in the morning, and the fact that uh, I, I really for just years now. I've never had an appetite in the morning. I really can't really make myself eat unless it's something very sweet, and so it's just enjoyable to eat because it's sugary, but I really have no appetite in the morning. Yeah, so by the time shows roll around, you're hungry. I'm starving, usually. Um, And then I'm usually pretty time-crunched at that point. So you don't have time to cook. So what I decided to do was I decided to start intermittent fasting combined with Soylent for the lunch meal, and then usually like a medium-sized dinner in the evening. Mm. With, a, with a lot of water during the day. And how's that working out? It's been really interesting. So uh, I start in the morning with uh, usually a bulletproof coffee, which is just what I call coconut oil butter and a little bit of vanilla now, a little vanilla extract, yeah. And then I mix it all up real good, put it in a cup. Um, think of the butter as sort of like a creamer, and I use MCT coconut oil, which is doesn't have a taste. So there's no coconut oil taste. And when you blend it all up, it sort of just gives it a good brothy feel it doesn't it's not necessarily oily or anything like that but the oil is an important part because i guess i'm probably going to butcher this but when you when you consume that type of oil which is a which is a really good healthy kind of fat when you consume that with the caffeine omega 3 yeah it helps it helps your body better manage the caffeine intake and outtake so you don't necessarily get those ups and downs mm-hmm. but the other thing is is that's actually nutritional it's actually nutritional to a degree mm-hmm. and so it essentially acts as my first meal. So not only does it give me a bit of an energy boost, but it acts as my first meal. So that was the time-saving element which actually propelled me to try this. Mm-hmm. But then I started discovering huge, noticeable improvements to my ADD. Like in way better focus, way quicker mental capacities. Like like I all of a sudden, boom, the light went on in my head again. I hadn't realized how clogged up and and constantly distracted and scattered I'd become and I just immediately got more focus and way more energy especially in the morning like on when we on the first last that we did I I was going at a, I was going at a thousand percent I had really had a lot of energy I felt really really good mm-hmm. and I still felt good by the end of the second last I got off the air and Anne said boy you've been on the air for six hours you must be exhausted <laughs> I said wow yeah I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of tired but I'm I'm not exhausted, and in fact, we went out and did several things afterwards. And I, it, mm-hmm. I had, I was, I was up till about eleven o'clock uh, afterwards. I had an, a tremendous amount of energy for something that would normally leave me completely drained. So I noticed, I noticed massive improvements for things that had become major ADD penalties. Which I've noticed that my my ADHD, which is diagnosed, is pretty manageable all the time. In fact, I consider it mostly as as an entrepreneur to be a benefit, mm-hmm. but. When I when my sleep and my food start to really get bad, it 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 becomes not a, it becomes the it becomes it becomes more of a burden, and I just I'm really bad at keeping on task and really bad at all of the things that are atypical symptoms, and so seeing a massive improvement there was 
boy, was that really just a big mood booster for me. Like, yeah, that was, that was, wow, that feels good. Hmm. And um, then there was a third effect mm-hmm. that, I'm not getting there yet. There is a fourth effect. <laughs> then there was a third effect that uh, is, is maybe the biggest breakthrough for me all year. And if I hadn't been religiously sleep tracking myself for a while now, I wouldn't have quantifiable data to prove this, but my sleep has improved at an unbelievable rate. So I was getting maybe an hour, hour 30 of deep sleep on a good night, maybe maybe 30 minutes some night, and now I'm getting four and a half hours of deep sleep. It is, in some cases, just a phenomenal improvement in my quality of sleep, and I don't know why that is. I don't really, because I'm drinking... I'm just drinking a cup of coffee in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm sometimes having a second cup of coffee later in the day if I feel like it, but I usually cut myself off by two. But what I am doing is I'm, I am no longer consuming anything for between 8 p.m. and 1 p.m. So there's, a, there's like a 16-hour window of time that I just don't eat, and there's an eight-hour window of time that I do eat. And mm-hmm. I don't do it every day either. Like today I decided – today I just sort of listened to how I felt – you know, I was like, oh, actually, today I feel like I feel like being full all day today, mm-hmm. and so I just didn't fast today. But I have I have been for pretty much about I've been doing this schedule now for about four days on, two days off, three days on, kind of like you know, kind of like kind of like on and off a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's the results have been so noticeable that now Hadia started to do it too because she's I mean she's just seeing the results herself. And it's so that's been really incredible. So the Soylent sort of just kind of wasn't really got all kind of just wrapped up in this because it gave me the Soylent has given me like a, a, a more nutritional meal than I would otherwise have at the end of the fasting window. So when I stop fasting at one o'clock, I just go out into the kitchen. I've got a quick meal replacement that I have, which is legitimately going to be better than the KFC I'd likely go get. Yeah. And or the pizza or the Jimmy John's or rarely Chinese. Or, or more often, the microwave lunch that I've got on sale somewhere that I've just loaded up in the fridge wherever Rika hasn't loaded up. <laughs> and th- those are usually what I have. So now instead I'm having the Soylent. And then, at, and then in the evening, I, I kind of have an early dinner just so that way I don't get really hungry. But I, it, I, do, I feel a little hungry at times, but not, not necessarily, in a, not necessarily in, in a way that's not manageable ever. Yeah, just go have a snack. Now, the Soylent has had a few side effects. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess you, you've read about some of them uh yeah usually uh when you have soylent for somewhere around the first two weeks uh your gut bacteria is adjusting so you have really bad farts (laughs) (laughs) yeah so um that's you know it hasn't really been a problem you're sitting next to him confirm no it hasn't really (laughs) been a problem during the day but it seems to be a problem in the evening after it's been in the system for a while (laughs) <laughs> yeah, around the time you're digesting it. Um, well, and right about the time you, you get back into your, into your uh, small confined living area called the RV. Just because it's just us here and nobody's listening, I'll also say that there is sometimes, because maybe I'm not eating a lot of solids, there's just other things as yeah, a side effect. That, that, that also happens sometimes. It, it varies yeah. from person to person. Well, and my system is extremely sensitive. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I have such a wuss stomach that if, you know, I eat a couple extra well, pieces of cheese and I'm out. And your stomach has also adapted to eating terrible foods. Yeah. But I, even when I go out to eat, I don't get, I don't get cheese. Like I, I have a very, I have like a, like a, you know, a window that I get within that I know it's not going to screw me up. But with the Soylent, so I, that's one of the reasons why I'm not eating it every day right now. Either I'm I'm consuming it about about every other day at this. I did I did like two I did the first three days in a row just to sort of build up to it, and now I'm going every other day for a little bit as I adjust to. Yeah, supposedly if if you do it every day, the the side effects last for about two weeks, and then you adjust and you're fine. That's a big investment, but the, the I do really like the idea of eating slightly healthier and the massive time savings I get because I'm doing the a bulletproof coffee in the morning. And then this in the afternoon, and and then I'm eating a you know trying to get a nutritional meal in the evening, and drink a lot of water. And then whenever I don't feel like that's not working right, I just I, I allow myself to change and throw that plan out the window immediately and, and do whatever feels right to the body. 
which I feel like is is a pretty good way to approach this. And the 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 um, I mean, here we are right now. This is uh, it's six thirty five in the evening ish over here on JB Time. This is my third show, and I'm I'm not I don't I don't feel tired at all. I'm totally ready to go. Yeah, good to go. Fired up. Ready to go. <laughs> so Soylent has been an interesting experience. What do you think, Noah? You think we're crazy? It's actually zero carbs. Um, well, I, I think that uh, I think that uh, being the son of a cardiologist, uh, I, I, it's been drilled into my head since day one that uh, that high protein, low carb diets are are horrible on your kidneys and 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 uh, and horrible for your health. That said, I've known a lot of people that have lost a lot of weight doing it. Um, so, and I don't know anyone that's died from it. So. And uh, I wonder doc, too, Dr. Atkins like, if died depends, a, uh, slip by slipping on ice. Well, to be clear, too, uh, um, Soylent is is not a keto thing. It's just a yeah. nutritionally balanced drink. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm going to see how it goes. Yeah, the keto thing, I think, is also interesting. And also, you have to you have to weigh the health benefits of losing weight. That could potentially long term be a help. Could help you be healthier overall. Yeah, that's basically what's driven me towards it. All right, well, I'm going to pause right here since now everybody's been waiting for us to actually talk about something they're interested in. Might as well take a moment right now. <laughs> and thank our patrons. We got some good pickups over at patreon.com slash today. I said, you know, one of the things I said last week is uh, we're going to start releasing the wallpapers that we use in the video version to people over on the Patreons because I know a lot of folks have signed up recently to support the show, and I just want to give them a little thank you. And I got some other ideas I'm working on too, but – it takes a lot of back and forth. But we're starting doing that now over at patreon.com slash today. That's where you go to support the show. And one of the things we want to commit to you is, and I'm not sure what we should make the number, but we're up to 700 right now. And I think if we could get if we could get a, a I don't know, it'd actually have to be a pretty reasonable number because I think we could get a pretty s- serious sponsor for the show. Mm-hmm. So it'd have to be a number equivalent to close to that, maybe like half to that or something. I don't know. We don't, we don't. That might be something we could start setting as a milestone for the show because – User error, I would love to keep it totally audience-supported forever. So start by supporting us at patreon.com slash today if you're enjoying the show. And uh, also take advantage of the wallpaper I'm posting over there. And thanks, everybody, who signed up. I have a problem I need to solve. So you have a rough idea in your head the size of the place where I live, the thousand I trails where I live. Mm-hmm. And I want, to, I, want to, I want to pick your brain on the best radio to use that I could give the like one of the kids here take this and mm-hmm. go out and play and if you need something buzz me on the radio because they're gotcha. really learning the terrain now yep. but I want to I, I, if they have something that comes up and I'm not sure if this is just like a if this is like a radio shack two way thing or if this is more ham radio I mm-hmm. don't know so I thought I'd ask the radio master well there's a couple different things you could there's a couple different ways you could tackle this <clears throat> certainly if you want the most amount of coverage um, then ham radio is pretty much your only option because you know the, you know the, the limit of the the limit of a ham radio is of course around the world there is no limit. Um, but it, w- speaking with them within a practical aspect, if you don't want the kids to have to go and take a test, one thing you could use is something called the multi-use radio service or Mars radio. Now the advantage of Mars radio is there we divide um, frequencies into different categories. So we start at the very low end. Of the of of you know megahertz, and we say you know uh, uh, you know fifty megahertz to hundred megahertz, we call that HF or high frequency, and then anything between a hundred megahertz and uh, we'll say like four hundred megahertz is 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 VHF or very high frequency, and then anything anything above that is ultra high frequency. It, it, so like four hundred megahertz to you know eight hundred is ultra high frequency, um, and so we divide those in, into bands. The, the advantage of VHS VHF is that a large majority of radios work on VHF. And, and and if you think of it kind of like a ball, the further the the lower the frequency, the the further it's going to propagate. Because the, if if I take a ball and I throw it across the room, if it bounces four times, each of those bounces are going to travel a large distance. Where if I throw a ball and it bounces a hundred times in the same you know in in a, in, a, in a given space, obviously. It's it's going to be more densely populated sure. in that space, but it's not going to travel as far. So the terrain is a lot of hills and a right. lot of trees. Yeah. So you you're, you want to get you want to get a lot of you want to get a lot of penetration. You want to go out. But you're not really worried about you're not really worried about uh, trying to keep that signal densely uh, you know uh, contained like you would in, inside of a building or something. So VHF is definitely the way you'd want to go. And the great thing about Mars or multi-use radio service is they give you five frequencies that you are able to use for free. And so you can buy just any VHF radio that you want, or you can order them off of eBay used or something like that, and you can program these. And I think Mars will let you go up to something like, I want to say 
two watts. It might be 500 milliwatts, but I think it's, I think you can go up to two watts. What kind of range do you think you get with something like that? So if you're, I mean, uh, I could easily get a couple miles. Oh, on, 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 great. Uh, yeah, on two, on two watts. really yeah. spotty cell service out there. So a cell phone doesn't really do the job. Yeah. Well, a cell phone, to give you an uh, idea comparison, a cell phone is between like three and probably 800 milliwatts. And so this is going two watts. So you're getting, it's like four times the amount of power. Hmm. Um, but yeah, so Mars Radio, and the nice thing is there's actually, Motorola actually makes a really nice commercial radio that they have, there's a ton of them that are in use. It's the HD 1000. You can probably pick those things up for 30, 40 bucks on eBay. You know, I'm all about standards, right? The great thing about the, the Mars standard or the VHF standard is you don't have to say, well, I bought the Cobra walkie talkie. So now I always have to buy the Cobra whatever, because they need to work with one another. You can buy any radio from any manufacturer, as long as it's a VHF radio, and then you can program it to, you know, whatever frequency you're using in this case, Mars. Both of you guys are making me jealous. Both getting new rigs, getting new setups. And I want to talk about Noah's new system, specifically we'll get into the CPU, but before we do that, Rikai has a development in his new build. Did you tell us about that in episode two, I think it was? Uh, two or three. Yeah. So you have some big new updates. Well, kind of uh, new updates. I didn't realize you are doing water cooling. Yeah. Um, I guess you might have mentioned it just went over. I was like, oh yeah, of course. And then I'm like, wait, wait, what? Water cooling? <laughs> Uh, and the critical po- component of that for the water cooler is the water cooler, right? If in a water cooling setup. And is that the decision you've made? Explain to me, son. So I'm doing water cooling. Um, it's kind of a, a hybrid all-in-one setup that can be later extended to other things. So uh, I'm getting a SwiftTech H320-2. Um, and the way it works is it's this integrated... Uh, all-in-one water cooler that has a radiator and the pump, which is in this setup, is attached to the radiator. And then it's got the tubing and it comes with the, the CPU mount. But they use parts that are normally used in custom water cooling setups. So you can detach the hoses and add more stuff into the loop hmm. later on. So I figured I'd start off water cooling the CPU and then eventually add the GPU later. Because I'm trying to build a setup that is as quiet as possible. For recording? Yep. Has there been a decision on the case? Yep. I'm getting a Fantex Enthu Evolve ATX Tempered Glass Edition. Mostly because it fits the water cooler, but also because it looks really damn cool. And Chris is super jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. We should put a link to that in the, in the show notes because it's a sweet case. When I first showed him the case, he spent like 15 minutes wishing that he had that case. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's, it's a normal PC case, but it looks really nice. And both sides are just full sheets of tempered glass. So hopefully I never break it because it's really hard to clean up uh, tempered glass. Mm-hmm. But it looks really nice, so. Yeah, just just keep it away while you're building. Just put it off in the corner somewhere. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then uh, Noah's got himself a CPU over there, Noah. And you, give me a reminder. Do you remember what it was? You, t- you mentioned uh, it in the last. Yeah. Um, actually, even before the uh, what I'll call the um, the Windows Day Zero event occurred, even before that happened. Um, I knew that I, I I needed to make some changes in the studio, and I was trying to figure out the most cost-effective way to do that. And I was sitting on the couch with Beard, and I said, Rikai, help me build a computer that would work well to broadcast all this stuff and so that the video quality goes up. And he goes, all right. So we go and price a bunch of stuff out. And it's like, he's like, well, no problem. For like, you know, $1,800, we could build a computer that'll do everything you want it to do. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. So let's knock like about $1,500 off of that. And then let's see if we can do it again. <laughs> and so he went through and, and he said, all right, he's, he's honestly, the most important thing is the CPU. You want a certain amount of PCI lanes and you need, uh, you know, this and that, and all these different specifications. And eventually he said, this is the CPU you have to get. This is the, this is the only one you can get. You can go anything lower than this, you're going to have a bad day and it's going to cost a little bit of money, but I will 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 spend the rest of the time picking out other cost-effective components so that you can afford to buy the CPU you need. So what we wound up with is Intel boxed i7-6700 FC LGA 14C 3.4 gigahertz 8M. Um, that's an LG 1151 socket, I believe. So uh, for normal people, that's uh, an i7 6700K. So anyway, so then we spent the rest of the time kind of Googling around and and looking for motherboards that weren't made by off-brand no-name manufacturers that nobody's ever heard of and doesn't work. And, uh, so and, not Gigabyte. So not Gigabyte. And and we, we, <laughs> we're looking for like Asus or ASRock or something like that. And then below the $130 price point. And so we eventually found a motherboard for, I think, $118. Um, 
and I paired that with some RAM. And of course, I had a couple hard drives laying around, so I didn't have to do that. And I had a couple power supplies laying around. So yeah, EVGA 650 watt power supply. And of course, if you have one like detailed links, all the links to that are in um, next week's episode of the Linux Action Show. So explain to me the, uh, the 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 thinking behind the CPU, Rikai. You said it's the most import, com, important component for what he's doing? Yeah. Um, part of the reason was because um, if you go, I think it's below uh, i5s or maybe i7s, you don't get quick sync, which um, OBS can take advantage of now, which offloads um, part of the encoding to dedicated hardware. And then... Also, uh, the 6700K gives you more PCI lanes, if I remember correctly. Uh, originally, I wanted to know what to get a, um, a 5820 because it had more uh, CPU cores, but this was the cheaper alternative that still worked. Yeah, and we needed. And, and 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 another thing that relates to the PCI lanes was, I need. I ultimately want to have four capture. Uh, uh, HDMI four capture cards or a one capture card realistically with four HDMI capture ports in it. And so we were doing the math on, on how many USB cameras slash capture things it would take, you know, before that gets filled up. And so this CPU will allow me to do all four of my HDMI captures plus the, uh, USB webcam, like, you know, whatever cloud or, you know, sky cam kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, the downsides of the 5820K as well is that, even though it has more CPU cores, it can support less PCIe lanes than a 6700K, if I remember correctly, which uh, would have limited some of his uh, USB stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Good thinking, guys. That is actually a really important aspect to think about this stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's the other thing, too. I didn't cover this on last because I, I haven't ordered it yet, but the um, the USB card that I'm eventually going to use for all of the capture things is a is a quad bus uh, – is a quad bus um, – USB uh, card. So what does it, that mean? It means that I have a separate uh, USB bus for every single port on the back. It has a dedicated bus, so I can pu- plug. I can have. I can plug in six cameras to the six USB ports, and every one of those has their own USB. I'm not going to run out of USB have, bandwidth. They'll each be running off of their own USB controller, I believe. As a yeah. and these yeah. as a like a, so it's going you're going to have four PCI cards. No, one card, four controllers. On the one card, one for each oh, port. Oh, I see. So it comes with its own card. Yeah, I think yeah. each each controller uses one PCIe lane. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, I want one of those. And the the other consideration for going with the sixty seven hundred K is, although it's I believe more expensive than the fifty eight twenty, um, the motherboards are a lot cheaper. So it ended up mm. saving him money. In the <laughs> nice ninja move. So that's pretty cool. So the, all of this. All of this was really in the effort to try to get the video quality of the Linux Action Show up as high as possible. You know, one of the things we really wanted to do with this show, with User Air, was go back and take some of the lessons we learned with uh, the audio experiment of the Linux Action Show and loop them into an actual show that we could experiment with the production end and the, and, and the, and the technology to make it. In fact, we've got some questions about that technology, so I'll try to get to those in a little bit. So... Th- this this overall quality is a lot harder to achieve when you're using video. It, the the editing is dramatically more sophisticated. The the the, the dynamics of it are totally different th- than solving the problem under audio. And I think last sits in at Linux Action Show and, f- and several of our shows sit in this unique spot where they have a huge huge commuter audience base that is mm-hmm. is massive and is primarily audio. But then they also have a very reasonable and vocal video audience Mm -hmm. that watches it on video platforms, and they're just as important to us. So last sits in the spot where we need to cater to both, and so what what we've decided is the real solution is is just to get that particular solution as high quality as we freaking can, because that's the product our listeners want, and we've been doing it for 10 10 years, and we want to make it as good as we can. And so, but it's a brand if you uh, it as well, you know. And and you know that's one of the reasons why you, we've been checking off boxes. And now Noah's got a great camera, he's got great audio, and now now there's a new PC build going in to to uh, facilitate the processing of the video. But the the actual video connection has also recently been changed out, and people have noticed. We've gotten comments on the subreddit. We've gotten emails that have come in asking what's going on. I've gotten tweets about it, and so I, I said I would address it in this issue, uh, this episode of User Air. Ooh, I like. Th- 
I like calling it this issue of user error. That Oh, man, we should have thought of that at the beginning. It's too late now. That train's left the station. So it, it's been asked, what, what's, what's the big change? What's the dramatic change, Noah, that makes you look so much damn better in the uh, recent episode of the Linux Action Show? Well, part of it is I am now using my ThinkPad rather than a, the uh, the older HP workstation that I had. So I had a <clears throat> the second gen. And actually, that was replacing an old, old, old Wild Dog that I've had for years. And the fact that the Wild Dog got me as far as it did was amazing. Because that Wild Dog, I think, is like... Two, when's the, when was the first time the Wild Man. Dog came out? I, 2010, 2011, somewhere. is way long yeah. ago. And uh, and so I replaced the Wild Dog with... I bought an HP workstation. That was back when I was, when I was doing the... Um, when I was filling in for you during... I knew I was going to need two computers. And so I thought, well, I'll take the Wild Dog and use that as my remote connection machine. And then I'll have a new... New to me anyway. HP workstation that will be uh, doing all the, the heavy lifting. And I, I don't know why it worked. Because I didn't have low frame rate then. Um but so anyway, so it worked great with OBS. And I thought, well, now that when then when you came back, I said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to reconfigure everything back the way it was. I will just, instead of connecting to my, whoever my remote host is, I'll just connect to you. And then I'll be able to share my screen and do all of those things. And somewhere along the line, that second gen i5 just decided it wasn't good enough up to the task and started dropping frames like crazy and just made me look like crap. Uh, and so that was problem one. And then problem two was the software that we're using, Hangouts, is just just by its very definition, it's just not meant for broadcast. It's meant for video conferencing with friends. Um, and even Hangouts on Air is really more designed about taking your product and then recording it and putting it on YouTube. It's not really meant, again, as to facilitate this kind of remote connection. Which thing. was officially shut down today. Yeah, right, right. Um, so so they had, and I mean, I, you know, regular Hangouts is still a thing, but they um so the so anyway so we had this problem of of this remote connection thing we uh, we tossed around a bunch of different a bunch of different ideas and uh, i think both chris and rakai and myself all all three of us were like independently working and trying out various things and what we eventually settled on was uh, was jitsi which is kind of ironic in a way because we started with jitsi that's what that was the first that thing that we used ironic. and then yeah. we we kind of went full circle and we tried everything in between and, and arrived back at jitsi just the web I, version I, I've noticed, I definitely noticed last week we had some issues, especially towards the end of our six hour recording marathon. Um, there was a, there was a, there was a, like a three second latency towards the end there. But also there, there's, there's still some ducking issues with the audio that I don't like. Mm -hmm. um, have you noticed that too? Like it, it ducks oh. his, it drives his audio down. And um, when the, de when there's a delay, the audio, the audio ducking, it matches the delay. So when we had a three second delay and I would say something, his audio would be fine until three seconds later, and then it ducks. Mm -hmm. um, and that so that that happened in last week's episode, which is kind of unfortunate. But uh, we we'll just we're just going to use a different audio program on the back end, mm -hmm. maybe Mumble or mm -hmm. hell, even Skype or something. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, meet.jit.si, then just slash the name of uh, a room, and it spins one up on demand using WebRTC. We've been here before, but in the past. It didn't support uh, manually setting your own audio in and out mm -hmm. and camera, which was huge for us. And you couldn't remove some of the on-screen controls, didn't have a full screen mode, and you couldn't minimize the film strip, which is all the participants. All of which, all of those things are now fixed. Well, in some ways, like the 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 hiding of the, the stuff, uh, I did a bit of a little hacky hack. workaround. I've set up a, a bookmarklet for Chris that runs some JavaScript and hides everything but the uh, the the video. And yeah, uh, so it, it's like it's it's like it's like an HTML canvas thing is it's doing, isn't it? It's like it's that it's like it's just all that stuff just disappears. All of the UI elements of Jitsi disappear, so it's just Noah's video. It's yep. nice. Yeah, so it's doing all that via JavaScript, so it works pretty well. And if he wants the the UI elements back, he just has to refresh. And uh, the other good thing about Jitsi Meet is that uh, even if they stop uh, doing the, their web hosting, you can also self-host it, which is uh, a good backup for us. Which I, yeah, Actually, I don't think it's going to be a backup. I think it's inevitably is probably going to become a thing, right? I think that just for the purpose of controlling bandwidth and and the ability to make some changes when they come out, I think we'll eventually wind up on our own, don't you guys think? Yeah, because then you can we can yeah, also probably. hard set some camera resolution rules and things like that. But I'll tell you, it was it was great on Friday when I was doing the elementary OS Loki release. Mm -hmm. And I it crossed my mind, like when we were talking about all the different things we might try out, like uh, setting up RTMP streams and bouncing them around and pulling them in, that 
would be awesome for Noah, but totally does not accommodate bringing on guests at all. And like they would, so we'd still end up having to have a completely separate solution for all of our guests. And so I found myself on Friday all of a sudden needing to bring in two guests since we've made this change. And it, it dawned on me how nice it is that I can just DM them or, or email them a Jitsi link and they just click it and connect. And I mm-hmm. don't have to walk them through installing software. I don't have to walk them through anything complicated at all. It's just click this link and turn your camera on. And it seems to just work for whatever OS you're using too for the most part. Yeah, we've had really good success under Linux and that's what matters for us. Mm-hmm. So these are sort of like, it it paints a a whole better picture for Noah. I think we still have a little bit of room to improve on the audio, Mm -hmm. but we're getting there. Yep. And we have an idea how to, we have an idea, it's just a matter of connecting in a different way. If uh, if we do want to do crazy RDMP stuff and stuff like that, this will just slot right in without any real extra effort. Yeah. Now, while we're talking about audio and stuff like that, somebody also asked how we're generating the waveforms for this show. And in the video version, there's a there's a GitHub project we should probably link to in the show notes that people could check out. Yeah, it's by um, a user called DJ Fun. Uh, it's called uh, Python Audio Visualizer, I believe. Um, I've been contrib- contributing some stuff uh, back upstream to uh, improve it, and he's also been working on it, uh, and it's working out really nicely. And um, people have complained about um, some of our first couple episodes having. Uh, problems playing on some players mostly android devices yeah yeah um that should be fixed starting with this episode um i made some changes to to bring the format that is used by default in line with most of what jb uses so if you can play a jb um episode it should play fine there you go that's really cool thanks rikai and it's nice that we can contribute that back upstream and he seems like he's right on top of that. Those those patches can't be that old, and they're already in. They're already upstream. I sent a patch in at like three a.m. the other day, and an hour later, he he added it. <laughs> I love that. And so we'll have a link to that project if you want to. All you have to do is just point it at a background and an audio file, and it'll spit you out uh, an MP4 with the uh, with the visualized yep. stuff. It's pretty nice, and it makes it really cool for us to be able to edit this in audio and still produce a visual component that's attractive to look at. So thank you to, uh, what'd you say his name was? Uh, uh, DJ, DJ Fun? Fun? Yeah, <laughs> thanks to DJ Fun. <laughs> and that, that really runs nice. on Linux or no? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's a Python cool. script. Yeah, it's, it, it brings up uh, a Qt-based uh, uh, graphical interface to, to, so, to do all the input, nice. and then you click generate uh, uh, MP4, and it, it's using FFmpeg on the back end to do the encoding. Nice. Speaking of the, uh, the interface, hopefully soon there will be more options on the interface to be able to change uh, things like resolution and frame rate and uh, what container you want to use. So mm. it'll be a full-fledged thing soon. Man, that's going to be... I, I'm, we kind of, I think we found a pretty cool tool early on yeah. that's going to help people create uh, nice content. About 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning, I was like, I realized that I just had a, an extraordinarily stressful week and it wound up with like a marathon last and driving back. Because I spent, I drove 1,000 miles in the oh. like 14 hours preceding last. Uh, oh, was uh, was that the the picture that you sent? Yeah, me? yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna yeah. port it to Chris. But I, uh, so I, uh, so I got home and I and I said, uh, you know what I want? I just I feel like chicken dijon, and I'm like, so I start looking for restaurants that might have it that I could go to the next day, and I can't find it anywhere. And so what I what is what is chicken dijon? Really, dude? It's uh, it's um, do you know what dijon mustard is? You mean dijon? Dijon. Sorry, whatever. Quiet. Okay, all right. Okay, yes, yes. I know what you mean. <laughs> Okay. All okay. Right. Do you know? Yeah. So I, I just I, so maybe that's DiGiorno. why I couldn't find it because I kept putting it on. I think that's what we're calling it from now. On. We're calling it DiGiorno. Anyways, chicken, chicken DiGiorno. DiGiorno. <laughs> yeah, that's actually actually I think that's what it was. Was I just keep thinking of DiGiorno every time I see it? Well, anyway, so I, so anyway, so I, uh, I I look and I can't find it anywhere in North Dakota. Maybe because I was putting an R in it, and so I decide, well, I'm going to um, I'll just make it. And I'll figure out how to make it. So I I I, uh, I look up. Uh, I I don't like following recipes per se because I'm the Alton Brown. You don't understand the thing behind it. Don't just follow whatever. So I kind of look and I'm like, I kind of get a rough idea. And I'm like, all right, we're just going to throw this together. So I went to the grocery store and I bought some ingredients and I came back home and about an hour later I had chicken Dijon and I was uh, I was like, huh, it's actually pretty. You good. made it. You made that. Yeah. I'm gonna. Do you mind if I put that in the show notes? Not at all. Here, that actually, looks, here, actually, it looks like it's from a restaurant. I actually thought that was a restaurant. I thought it's like, hey, when he got that he's picked got up at a restaurant, a really fancy dining room as well. Yeah, well, he's fancy. 
Yeah, he is fancy. I, uh, that is actually. I uh, did you yeah. Take so, I made some, so I made some for my wife, and then I should went, I play this? Should I play this? Yeah, you can. It just uh, okay. that was playing my, the music. That was my. That was my. That was wow. My, I, it was no a, wonder why Sarah puts up with a little you. bit of romance. <laughs> actually, I always wonder how that makes sense. Actually, if you look very carefully, that's actually the table I film all of the last episodes at too. I know. I recognize <laughs> it. I recognize, nice move. Well, good. I'm glad you treated yourself. Yeah. Look at you. You do know how to treat yourself from time to time, don't you? It was. It was good. Because cooking was relaxing. So it was like two two hours or so of like re- grocery shopping was relaxing. I almost, I was talking to Rakai. We were telegramming back and forth. I was telling him how I thought I totally bombed uh, an episode that day of last. And uh, and so I was, I was telling him, I was like, I think that's the worst episode I've ever done. And and we're going back and forth about it. And then I, I, I half typed out. Where would I find uh, Dijon mustard in the grocery store? And like, no sooner do I get the first three words of that typed out, and I'm like, what I ask a guy, how would he know you went to a grocery store? So that wow. I wow, <laughs> come on, man, you order your groceries online; they come delivered. How would you know? I'm where- sorry that I live in the future. That doesn't mean that I don't see what I buy. <laughs> I didn't say you didn't see what you buy. I said you wouldn't know where it is in a grocery store. He actually has a. It real- would be in the condiment hey, aisle. What's that great mustard you've been eating recently? Uh, that's a good mustard. It's a. Inkelhofer's sweet hot mustard. Yeah, there you go. That's a mustard for you. It's spicy and sweet, and it will wreck your face. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was Jack Daniel's. Uh, this was Jack Daniel's uh, uh, Dijon mustard. That's what I. That's what I bought. That sounds like it contains alcohol, Noah. Mm, I don't think so because it was at a grocery store. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They smoky. put the taste in there. Yeah. So I have something I could share with the class. It's not really. It's not really tech related though. But neither, uh, is, neither is chicken Dijon. Yeah, who cares though? That's delicious. Well, did you use any Linux to to make? Uh, yes, I your did, sir. Dijon? Yes, I did because when I got there it done, go. I documented the whole process in Gourmet so I could do it again. Nice. <laughs> There's there your you tie-in. Go. It's legit. Uh, I passed a I passed an interesting, I think, somewhat notable milestone recently. Oh yeah. Um, Labor Day was my one year of living full time in an RV. Congratulations. Nice. Yeah, I didn't even really realize it until I was at. Uh, at a social function at the uh, at the Thousand Trails, and the guy, one of the guys that's also a full timer there, uh, was like, uh, "Hey, you, you passed your year. I remember when I remember the day you got here." And I was like, "Oh yeah, I remember you." We started talking, and I realized that uh, it's been a year, and that is kind of interesting because if you've never if you've never spent a lot of time in a trailer or an RV, it is essentially a tiny tiny home. It's like two hundred square feet. And so I thought after a year, I would be stir crazy, especially with three kids. Like, I just thought... Sick of the lack of room. Yeah, I thought I'd go be going nuts. Um, and so Hadia and I, um, re- just the other day, just said, like, hey, maybe we should just have, like, a one-year review g- discussion here and just have an honest discussion and say, hey, is this not working? Is this? Is there anything about this that we don't like? What, what, what do we do like? And uh, I think both of us really felt like... Uh, it, it actually has worked out p- pretty well. You know, the the main attraction for me, too, was uh, it was financially the most feasible option compared to renting in Washington and or buying because I have the studio in my name and Angela's house is staying in my name. Yeah. As somebody that is looking to potentially get a home, especially in the Seattle area, uh, that is a project. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it really is. Somebody like who just got grand a done month. doing this. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the the other thing that was really compelling about now looking back at it, I didn't really think of this at the time. I wish I had the force. I wish I was this smart and this clever. But now looking back at it, the thing that was for me just a, 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 an, an unbelievable time saver, I don't even know how I could have done this any other way, is the RV came with furniture <laughs> and TVs <laughs> and a microwave <laughs> and a fridge. Yeah, you don't often get those things with a, a house or an apartment. Yeah, and well, maybe with an apartment, but uh, but not the furniture, and not yeah. the televisions, and not the bed. When you bought the RV, you bought an entire living situation. Yeah, which I would have all had to go out and buy, which I wouldn't have had the money for, or but primarily, I also would not have ever had the time to do that. I would still not have things. It, it took me how long to get a couch for this been, damn place? You would have been eating your meals off of boxes. I, I think we were here for almost a year before I finally broke down and got a couch for the studio. I just this just going grocery or going grocery shopping was one, but going furniture shopping is not at the top of my to do list. And so I, I got all this stuff that I need to live, but 
would never have gone out and gotten, couldn't afford separately. It's all warrantied too, which is fantastic. And the other thing is, is I, I got I got a, a manageable amount of space. Like when 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 Hadi and I get you know like to the point where like okay, it's a little cluttered in here, we need to clean up. It's like two songs, and it's the place is the entire place is spotless. And you know, we played two three songs, and we're completely done with the with the house chores. Uh, and so having a small space has been has meant that when I go home after working, I don't have the guilt of all oh, all of these projects around the house that I'm not getting to like I used to have. I used to have a guilt about the yard and the garden and the garage and the roof and the gutter and the back patio and all this. Oh, man, and the stuff on the porch that I've been leaving, been meaning to get to. And just like all of this stuff when I owned a house that was dragging me down constantly and making distracting me all the time and all this little sh- Stuff you have to manage, you know, like, uh, like a like a garbage bill and all this stuff that you know is me, not. Let me, go ahead. Let me. I just. I, I'm going to take the other side of this. So, um, I actually like that stuff. I like mowing the, the the lawn. I actually. I was actually looking into. I was researching. I just talked about this on last. I'm actually researching sprinkler systems. Um, next week, I'm going to be redoing my roof. Um, and I, oh yeah, you yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I you know, I think uh, I think it helps. I think your problem isn't that you mind doing all the stuff or wouldn't enjoy it. I think your problem is that you never had time to begin with, and so it becomes I need to fit an hour's worth of work into oh about fifteen minutes because I don't have an hour. Really, I don't even have the fifteen minutes. I'm just stealing it from something else. And I think that's when that kind of stuff becomes mm-hmm. unenjoyable. But I, like I said, like last night, oh, for sure, like I could see like a point in my life where I would love doing that stuff. Yeah, yeah, and it, I would love having a garden and. All yeah. that. I mean, I, there's yeah. definitely, I could totally see taking joy in it at some point, but not right now. See, I don't think I ever could, but I, I feel like there's two types of people, the type that uh, either are or could someday be a handyman and me. <laughs> no, you know what though? Even beyond that though, Rick, like, have you ever, have you ever cleaned your, uh, you ever cleaned your, your, I don't know what you call it. Do you call it your room or your office, but your, your area, you ever cleaned it up and put everything away and you get everything. And then you kind of stand there and just kind of look at it and you're like, <sighs> and there's like that sense of like, I've done it. I've accomplished it. And like, and then like that night you go to bed and you wake up and you're like, oh yeah, just clean this place. Everything. Did you ever have that? Like that, that sense? Uh, no. Oh. When, when I clean up stuff, I, uh-huh. uh, at the end of it, I'm like, um, man, I could have spent a whole lot of time doing something else. <laughs> you're also just not very messy by default. So you don't generally make a mess of an area. So yeah. See, I'm, that, I, I'm <laughs> like a freaking hurry. Well, I mean, I don't have to tell you to. I'm like, <laughs> I'm in like a wrecking ball, <laughs> I know, man. I know. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a freaking hurricane. So, oh, so, no. but when I get done, I go out and I clean, I spend a couple hours and I clean the garage up or I clean my workshop up or something like that. And it's just like, there's just this sense of like accomplishment and pride. And I, I like that. Yeah. And so. Yeah. yeah, I used to get that when I washed my vehicles. Exactly. Yes. Great example. Yeah. Yeah. And you drive out and you're, and then you walk out to your truck and you're like, look at that. It's all nice and shiny. And like, yeah. yeah see, exactly. I just, I prefer to just not make the mess in the first place. That way I don't have to clean it. Mm. Yeah. That's uh that's sort of my philosophy right now. Yeah. And then, so I, I, I find the smaller space to be advantageous for that reason. Not only is it, not only is it portable, which is fun, but uh, that's just all that stuff would just be a burden stress on me right now. Well, yeah, and the the small space also probably uh, makes you think about um, the stuff you want to keep, so you don't. Oh my gosh! You don't accumulate so much stuff. Oh my gosh! Every single item we bring in is a, is a decision, which is actually probably the major downside. Um, is constantly deciding: is this actually something we want? And and friends and family don't really grok. Like, here's a plant. Have a plant. And it's like, okay, where are we going to put a plant? Like well, this thing drives down the freeway. That's easy to solve. You take the plant and you keep it and you don't water it and it dies and you throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that, that that is a big, that, that is a big thing is there is limited, that is limited I'm, space. But I'm I don't not, mind, I don't mind cutting out my, a lot of crap. Yeah. I, I have too much say, stuff. I don't, I'm not sure I consider it a, a disadvantage because although you do have the limited space, you can't have everything you want. It, it keeps you from accumulating stuff that you really don't need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the things I'm going to find the most challenging about it that I won't like are when I try to turn it into a studio a little bit. Yeah. I think I'm going to find issues in the electrical because I, I've got two different inverters and I think one of them is a cheaper inverter because it's it's sort of like the inverter that runs while the vehicle is driving. And I think it has a hum. I suspect I'm going to run into little issues like that. Maybe uh, you'll upgrade to uh, the next Lady Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> everything <laughs> DC. Go bigger. No, yeah. Everything DC. Everything exactly. DC, DC I, Master I Race. think... Um, I think the thing that you haven't really mentioned too much, though, is the biggest advantage is 
even though the space is small, if uh, you want to change the scenery, you can just go somewhere. Yeah. No, that is. Yeah. Next weekend, we're going to Winthrop for uh, Hadia's birthday. Most people can't just pick up their houses and go. It was really nice when we went to Montana for Dylan. Uh, I, I reflected on that a lot, like how great it was just to, we did grocery shopping and we just had our groceries with us. That's really nice. And Dylan's Dylan had access to power and internet the entire time we were traveling and we would we could stop and just make sandwiches really quick when we got hungry and it was it must be so much more convenient for traveling with kids mm-hmm. compared to a car mm-hmm. kids in cars mm-hmm. i i jump out the window <laughs> yeah for kids for kids my, uh, my kids and, and Noah's kids age i don't know how your kids do know but well the, the my, problem is like i have i have so little sympathy for my kids it's not even funny cuz when i was here, <laughs> here's the thing when i would we when we would go on somewhere in the car right my parents would put me in the back and I put my, they put my seatbelt on and then they would hand me a stack of books and they'd say, here, kid, read. I don't like reading. I don't want to read. Anything you get from a book, you can get from a TV twice as fast. So I would come wow. up with all these creative ways that I could bring some sort of electronic things. And so I remember having this small little television that I used a um, – because I didn't have a laptop at the time. And so I used a uh, like an AV converter thing to, to get a, the, the composite signal to be injected into, into an RF signal. And then I tuned the channel to three and it was this tiny little like seven inch black and white thing. And I was able to hook my N64 up to it, but I had no way of powering my N64 at the time. And so I had to save up and buy this like crappy inverter. But the problem was like it would run for a little bit and for whatever reason, like randomly it would just shut off and my game would restart. And like that's oh. that's the kind of thing that I grew up doing. And my son has a hotspot, a laptop, a phone and he's like and he's running around in the back of an rv and he's like i'm bored i don't know what to do that i'm bored i'm like what do you mean you're <laughs> mm-hmm. bored go play on I your know. laptop go play counter-strike oh, yeah. i'm sick of that we'll go watch one of the ten thousand movies you have i don't want to do that we'll go play pokemon go i don't want to do that and i'm like jesus i had one thing to do you have like 30 like there's no excuse yeah that's part of the so problem i just don't have much sympathy for him come yeah. on noah you don't get good uh good latency on, on my fi that's that's no good for counter-strike I thought you were a gamer. I am a gamer. You want to fight? I'll fight you one v one. I'll no scope you. Well, I'm going to beat you with your crappy latency. Fight me at land, bro. <laughs> fight me at land. Yeah, my my kids do better in the RV, but they don't do so good in the in the in the in the car itself. They after about 45 minutes, like, are we there yet? Yeah, yeah. Like, no, be quiet. Jeez, I had to go on much. I had to go on multi day road trips in the car. I, I was a pretty quiet kid when I was when I was a kid. Yeah, uh, I, I'd read a lot. Uh, my siblings, not so much. <laughs> Although, apparently, I did annoy my mom a lot by asking her a million questions about everything in the universe, including <laughs> the universe. <laughs> I, uh, that's a, I can just picture a cute little Rikai with a huge beard. That'd be adorable. 